Nothing makes a father happier than seeing their son go into the family business. And throughout NBA history, there have been countless father-son duos that have made their mark on the league. There's the common saying, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, and I thought it would be fun to put that to the test by comparing NBA fathers to their sons, including physical intangibles, play styles, career stats, and accolades. In this video, I'm going to be looking at four duos in particular, but there's a lot more out there, so if you want to see a part two, be sure to let me know in the comments. I also want to shout out fellow YouTuber KTO, who's made similar videos for football and served as a big inspiration for me to make this video, so be sure to check him out as well, but not after leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel first. Now without further ado, let's get started. The first father-son duo, or I guess trio in this case, is the Curry family, which is one of the most widely known athletic families, not just in basketball, but all of sports. Starting off with dad, Del Curry measured in at 6 foot 4, 190 pounds, playing primarily at the shooting guard position. He played his college ball at Virginia Tech and would go on to have a 15-year NBA career, spanning from 1986 to 2001 and playing for five different teams. He was largely known throughout his career as a three-point marksman, being a career 40% shooter from behind the arc, but also possessing the ability to put the ball on the floor for drives and pull-up jumpers as well. But outside of his efficient shooting, he wasn't really known for much else, not really being an effective passer, rebounder, or defender. For his career, Dell averaged 11.7 points, over two rebounds, and just about two assists per game. In terms of accolades, the highlight of his career came in the 1993 season when he took him sixth man of the year. Moving on now to his offspring, Dell would see both of his sons, Stefan and younger brother Seth, make it to the NBA. Steph obviously needs no introduction, being one of the most popular athletes in the US. Compared to his dad, Steph measures in a little bit smaller at 6'2", 185 pounds, plays at the point guard position, and would go on to play his college ball at Davidson. In terms of his NBA career, he's a four-time NBA champion, two-time MVP, and 10-time All-Star selection. He's widely considered the greatest shooter the NBA has ever seen and is a guaranteed Hall of Famer after he retires. In addition to his shooting though, he's also a great finisher around the rim, a high-level passer, and has been a serviceable defender throughout his career. His career averages as of now sit at almost 25 points, over 6 assists, and 4 rebounds per game. Moving on now to Seth, the frequently forgotten member of the Curry family, he measures in as the smallest of the bunch at 6 foot 1, 185 pounds, and plays a bit of a combo guard role, playing primarily at shooting guard but occasionally playing the point as well. He started his college career off at Liberty before eventually finding his way to Duke. His playstyle very much resembles his dad's, being primarily a 3 point specialist but occasionally being able to score off the dribble as well. Also like his dad, outside of scoring, Seth doesn't really bring much to the table in terms of rebounding, passing, or defending. And to further drive this point home, Seth's career averages are very similar to his dad's as well, currently sitting at 10.4 points to go along with 2 rebounds and 2 assists. Looking at all three side by side, Steph very clearly stands above the others as the best in the family, but that shouldn't diminish Dell and Seth's careers as solid role players. If there's one trait present among all the family members though, it's without a doubt shooting, with all three being knockdown jump shooters. So while Steph will undoubtedly go down as the best of the bunch, having three people from the same family make the NBA is still very much an impressive feat. Moving on now to the next father-son duo, we have Hall of Famer Gary Payton and his son, Gary Payton II. Starting off with dad, Gary Sr. played at the point guard spot and brought pretty good size to the position as well at 6 foot 4, 180 pounds. After playing his college ball at Oregon State, Gary Sr. would go on to have a long 16-year NBA career, being highly regarded for his strong and physical lockdown defense, which would coin him the nickname The Glove. Despite primarily having the reputation as a defensive player, he certainly wasn't a liability on the offensive end, having multiple 20 point per game scoring seasons, with most of his scoring coming in the mid-range or finishing through contact on drives. Additionally, he was a really underrated passer and could rebound pretty well for the point guard position. He put up solid career averages of 16 points, 4 assists, and almost 2 steals a game to go along with his impressive list of accolades, including an NBA Championship, Defensive Player of the Year, 9-time All-Star, and an absurd 9 first-team All-Defense selection. Overall, he was a really well-rounded player and is known as one of the most iconic point guards in NBA history. This brings us now to his son, Gary Payton II, who comes in slightly shorter at 6 foot 2 but weighing 10 pounds heavier at 190 pounds. Like his father, he also attended Oregon State and in terms of playstyle, you can tell that defense is definitely his calling.
calling card, as he is just as feisty and physical on the ball as his dad was. As such, he was appropriately given the nickname The Mitten. On the offensive side of the ball, GP2 hasn't shown anywhere near the same level of offensive ability as his dad, and he also doesn't show the same skills as a passer or rebounder either. I mean, if we're being honest, outside of one solid season with Golden State in 2021, he really hasn't been able to even find a consistent role or minutes in the NBA, and he's been passed around to several different teams already. For his career, he's averaging 5 points, 1 assist, and 1 steal a game, but he did win a championship during his time with the Warriors, and to his credit, he did provide a lot of quality minutes during that run. Taking a step back now and looking at both of their careers side by side, Peyton Sr. has undoubtedly outperformed his son, and outside of defense, it's just an overall more talented and productive player. But GP2 still does have some time to add on to his stats and accolades, but barring any late career resurgence, he definitely hasn't quite lived up to the career of his father. The third father-son duo on the list is the Hardaway family with Tim Hardaway and his son, Tim Hardaway Jr. For dad, after playing his college hoops at UTEP, he'd go on to be one of the NBA's most dynamic and electrifying point guards of the 90s. Known for his impressive ball handling, quickness, and shot-creating ability. Shooting-wise, he wasn't considered a marksman by any means, but he's definitely someone that you couldn't sag off of, which in combination with his incredible ball handling made him very difficult to defend. He was also a very skilled passer, racking up multiple seasons with 10 plus assists, and the combination of his scoring and passing abilities made him absolutely lethal in the pick and roll. Defensively, despite his smaller size, he was disruptive on the ball and had quick hands which allowed him to get a lot of steals, so he wasn't a one-dimensional player by any means. In terms of accolades, Hardaway was very decorated on an individual level, being a five-time All-Star, an All-NBA second team selection three times, and being a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame. On a team level, he never saw much success in the NBA, but he did earn a gold medal with the US Olympic team in 2000. Moving on now to his son, Tim Hardaway Jr., he was a bit luckier with the basketball genetics, measuring in much bigger than his dad at 6'5", 205 pounds, and similarly chose to play his college ball at a much bigger school, that being Michigan. He plays primarily the shooting guard role, so he doesn't handle the ball nearly as much as his father did. Rather, his role is mostly as a spot-up shooter with some limited ability to score off the dribble. However, unlike his dad, who had decent shooting percentages, Hardaway Jr. has shown to be, to put it nicely, not so efficient as a scorer, having a career 42% field goal percentage, and despite being known as a solid perimeter shooter, is only around 36% from three. He also doesn't necessarily shine as a passer, rebounder, or defender either, so he's not quite the all-around player like his dad was. He's purely a guy that can get you buckets, which isn't a bad thing by any means. I think he was in some bad situations in the past where he's been asked to do more than he's capable of, which led to some of his inefficient seasons. But I think in the right circumstances, he's a highly valuable piece for any team. For accolades, he doesn't really have any of note outside of an all-rookie team selection, so he falls short of his dad in that area as well. Comparing the two together now, this is another case of the father having much more success in the NBA than their son. But being as Hardaway Sr. was one of the top point guards of the 90s, it would have been hard to live up to his success. And it certainly shouldn't overshadow the fact that Hardaway Jr. is very much a solid player that has had a pretty decent career thus far. Lastly, to finish things off, we've got the Trent family with Gary Trent and his son, Gary Trent Jr. Dad stood at an imposing 6'8", weighing 250 pounds, playing primarily at the power forward position. In college, he'd play for Ohio University and would go on to play in the NBA in the mid-90s to early 2000s. His large frame allowed him to be a highly effective scorer in the paint, shooting over 50% from the field for his career. However, he also had a decent mid-range game that could keep defenders honest. He was a serviceable rebounder, and his size allowed him to be versatile on the defensive end, being able to match up with power forwards and centers. He never established himself as a star player in the NBA, serving mainly as a strong bench piece for multiple teams, averaging 8 points and 4.5 and rebounds for his career. In terms of accolades, he doesn't have any noteworthy accomplishments during his career. Interestingly enough, his son, Gary Trent Jr., would develop almost a polar opposite game, in large part due to being much smaller at 6'5", 205 pounds. Similar to his father, he's mostly known for his scoring ability, but unlike his dad who had a strong inside presence, Trent Jr. is very much a perimeter player and a very capable shooter from behind the arc. However, he's not just a catch and shoot guy and has shown some ability to be an effective shot creator off the dribble. Defensively, he's also very solid, and has for most of his career been viewed as a prototypical 3 and D player. And he has been decently productive so far, having career averages of 14 points and around 3 rebounds a game. This hasn't led to anything in the form of any accolades for him, and his production has started to drop off in recent years, but being as he's still only 25 years old, he definitely still has time to turn things back around. Looking at both of their careers, they've honestly been pretty similar, but I think Trent Jr. is overall the more talented player and will far and away have the better career among the duo. 
So that was four of the NBA's father-son duos compared side by side. Like I said before, there are many others out there, so if you want to see a part two, be sure to let me know in the comments along with other video ideas you'd like to see. As always, if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more sports content. This is Heat Check Productions signing off. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm out.